Hello, my name is Angela Moreland from the National Crime Victims Research and Treatment Center, and I am an associate professor there, and I am also the associate director of the National Mass Violence Victimization Resource Center, and today I'm going to be talking about building social connections during the COVID-19 pandemic. So as people are all too familiar, people, they understand that themselves and also their families are experiencing increased stress and have been experiencing this heightened stress for the past year, year and a half since the pandemic has been going on. There's multiple different challenges that families are facing during this pandemic, including lack of routine, limited contact with others, lack of social support difficulty getting items that are needed or difficulty getting medical access, and then lots of uncertainty and lack of information and just this fear for the general health of themselves and for family members. Also, a lot of fears re regarding children returning to school, parents returning to work, um, children returning and then being taken back out of school, and just kind of a lot of these um, changes and uncertainties that have continued to happen. And child behavior at all levels, so from young children all the way up through high school, their behavior may be more difficult due, due to having no school and activities and also due to just this change in routine. So um, kids really rely on routine and it's very, very important for them to feel safe and to feel like they are able to anticipate what's going to happen next. And over the past year or so, this has been very difficult because there's been constant changes in this routine. So stress and anxiety look very different in different people. So kind of some general things that we tend to see across the board are decreased energy, increased irritability, trouble concentrating or relaxing, lock, loss of interest in activities and increased substance use. It can also look feel, feel physiological to a lot of people. So people may have increased headaches or stomach aches when they're stressed. And children of all ages experience their own stress and they also notice what adults are feeling. So they may have their own fears and their own um, anxiety surrounding um, lack of routine, lack of structure, or just fears of getting COVID or their family members getting COVID. And then they're also experiencing that stress that adults are feeling. So even if we think our children don't hear us talking or don't necessarily know um, that we're more anxious, they typically do. And they typically will um, kind of fill in the blanks and figure out, try to figure out what's going on with parents, which then can cause increased stress for kids. So in kids, and not just young kids, but kids of all ages, um, what we tend to see is fear of being alone. So a lot more, um, a lot more separation anxiety from parents. So not wanting to sleep alone or not wanting to be alone without their parents. Um, bad dreams. They can have speech difficulties, changes in appetite. And then for younger kids, a lot of times we see loss of bowel control or bedwetting. So if kids are already potty trained or have been doing a pretty good job um, not wetting the bed, they may regress and kind of go back to bedwetting or go back to some of that loss difficulties with bowel control. We also see temper tantrums, whining, kids being more clingy. And in younger kids, this looks more like the clinginess that we think of with young kids. And older kids, this can look more like that separation anxiety or can look more like irritability and just having much, many more temper tantrums or whining or anger outbursts than they're usually having. But a really, really important thing for kids of all ages is to know that they have a secure relationship and that they can feel safe. So a lot of the anxieties and the stressors around um, around COVID and just over that kids are facing right now really um, hinge on needing that secure relationship and really wanting to feel safe. So one major thing that we can do as parents is to really support kids and reassure them and let them know how we plan to keep them safe and that we also are thinking about that. And it's very important to us as well. And then routine, like I said before, it may be a different routine from usual. They, kids may be staying up later. They may have adjusted schedules to deal with um, kind of to go around parents on schedules or to make things just a little bit better. Um, run more smoothly in the household, but they still need some type of routine. So even if that does change, it just needs to be um, still a routine and a changed routine and the kids need to know what to expect. 
So some signs that needs aren't being met, I went ahead and kept infants up here in case people do have young infants. So these are some of the things that we look in, look for, but then in children, we see these dysregulated aggressive behaviors. We may see attention deficits, um, lack of attachment with parents, and then also sleep problems. So kids may have more difficulty sleeping or more nightmares when they are sleeping. And then as we, I said before, more temper tantrums, whining, hitting, um, things that they may not have typically been doing but stress can really cause those things. So some ways that we can help children during uncertainty is to really talk to children in a simple, clear and age appropriate language and also and to reassure children. So providing extra comfort and patience during this time, setting a new routine and keeping the schedule consistent and then seeking social support. I mean, that's the major thing we're talking about today and connecting with friends and family and limiting that media exposure. So how do we talk to kids about COVID? It's very important to use developmentally appropriate language, including what is the disease and outbreak. Um, too, not too many children have contracted COVID-19, COVID how it spreads, some possible dangers, and then why they can't go to preschool or see their family and friends. So why they need to stay home right now to keep everyone healthy or why they need to be wearing masks. So you want to talk about positive social connections and new fun activities. So it is very, very important for the social connectedness piece that we explain to kids that it is very important to still have those social connections and that we may need to build in some unique and creative ways to have those social connections so that they aren't being disrupted during this time. Um, elicit feedback from kids. And this is not just about COVID, but about those social connections. Like who are they missing and who, what do they feel like they're missing out on? So are they missing out on Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts? Are they missing out on seeing friends that they usually want to see? Are they missing school and the connections that they may have at school? So really listening to what they're saying about these social connections and asking about their kids' concerns and also listening once you ask. So not only say letting the parent know that or letting the child know that you're interested in how they feel, but really listening and hearing what they're saying. And then answering questions honestly, but managing emotions. So making sure that we um, are being, um, are being listening to what kids are saying and then also answering those questions while managing our own emotions. So in talking to children, we want to recognize this, we want to talk about the positive, and that's where that social connections really comes in. So talking about, no, we're not necessarily able to spend time with people the way that we did before, but how can we spend different time with people now? Or how can we build that social connection, those social connections in ways we hadn't done before? Having a pen pal, um, doing more walks outside, becoming very close with our immediate family that we've been able to spend more time with lately. And then touching back periodically. So making sure it's not just a one-time conversation, making sure that we are finding out if the child is continuing to have problems and touching back with them every once in a while. Explaining, so we talked about this a little bit, explaining using developmentally appropriate language, um, listening, asking, and answering. So those are basically the areas that we talked about, but really laid out. And then setting a new routine and sticking to it. So it's really, really important that when we set a new schedule, we're still very flexible, but that we do have a schedule. Now with that emotional connection, it's really important to try to be emotionally available to children. So one thing that we've really noticed during this pandemic is family members are spending a lot more quantity of time together. So they're physically seeing each other a lot more, but that emotional availability and that quality of interactions is not quite what it used to be. So it's really important that we schedule one-on-one -on -one time. And if you have more than one child, it's really important that you do it separately. So for younger children, even for older children, just five minutes per child per day um, of a time where you're sitting down and doing something that that child wants to do with them. So they get to select the activity, but then that you're very emotionally available to those children. Um, for older kids, it might be, you know, taking an older child on a, on a, on an errand with you or doing something where you have that one-on-one -on -one time so that kids can feel that social connectedness. And then also setting up that time that they can be connected with others as well. So we really have to balance the importance of 
staying socially distant and staying safe during this time, Mm -hmm. but also knowing that there is a huge benefit in spending time together and in our kids having those social outlets. So figuring out as long as we can figure out how to do it in a safe way, how can we make sure that we're emotionally available to children and that they also are able to connect with others as well. Um, A visual schedule for younger kids. For older kids, it's really helpful too. So making sure that we have that schedule in the day and that social time is built into that schedule. So we really want to make sure that we're keeping in contact with family and friends. And if we can build in time for social, it might be riding bikes outside with a friend, doing a Zoom call, um, playing an online game where the ch- where the ch- children are connecting with each other those things are really really important and need to be built into the routine also for kids who have experienced aces so for kids who have experienced any type of trauma and i would consider having experienced a mass violence incident certainly um a criteria for this or part of that trauma so it's really important for parents to know that children who have experienced trauma may be more likely to have difficulty coping. So increased in symptoms of depression, anxiety, PTSD, and having a lot more time, a lot more difficulty handling stressors, and especially the stressors that come up during the pandemic. So it can have a negative impact on children in the home. Um, Stress can increase child abuse, increase domestic violence, and also can increase alcohol, tobacco, and drug use. So making sure that especially for kids who have experienced experience trauma, we're checking in with them and trying to build in that social support and the things that they need because they may be more impacted than kids who have not experienced trauma. And that's what cumulative trauma, I mean, kids have cumulative trauma, adults also have cumulative trauma. So with loss of jobs, decreased income, children being out of school, balancing work and childcare, and just difficulty in getting food, preparing meals, and social distancing, all of that stuff can very much build up and can cause all of us to have a very difficult time during this time. So the more that we're able to rely on each other and build in ways for our children to stay connected, not just with us, but with others, then that's improving the stress level in the household. Um, And during this time, a lot of people, some of those things I talked about in the beginning, we have fear and worry, fear about the pandemic, um, changes in sleep and eating patterns, um, worsening of chronic health problems, and then increased use of alcohol, tobacco, cannabis, and drugs. So remembering that all of those come into play. So we really need to build up support to try to prevent some of those things. So what are some additional things you can do to decrease this stress? Um, One piece is just really taking breaks from reading or listening to the news, um, knowing what's happening to help others, especially talking to children, trying to do things that you enjoy and take time for self-care. And that self-care can absolutely build in social support at the same time. So you could go on a walk with a friend. You could go to an outdoor restaurant and have coffee with a friend. Um, You could exercise with a friend. So doing something that involves that self-care, but it also can double as social support or connect in this time. And then really knowing the importance of asking for help. So we all need help during this situation. And one way to maintain that or to decrease that isolation is to help to reach out and ask for help from people. So lowering expectations and setting realistic goals for yourself and also asking for help in those spots that you really need it. So some creative ways to increase social connections. We've talked about this. Um, There's a lot of different things that people can do right now to increase social connections. So thinking about something that you can do outdoors that is safe and um, making a list of all of those things. So a good activity to do with your family would be to sit down and come up with a list of activities that we could do and almost create a menu of how we can um, build in social connections and then try to do one per day, even if it's just for five minutes, making a phone call, um, meeting a friend out side. Now that um, a lot of the outdoor um, mandatory rules have changed and people are able to spend more time outdoors with each other, trying to build in something like that at least once a day. 
and then also building in stress reduction for children and caregivers. So it's really, really important that at, during these times of really increased stress, we learn about feelings and emotions. We do mindfulness exercises and deep breathing. And I know that there's a couple of other um, talks in this series that specifically focus on deep breathing and mindfulness. So I would highly, highly suggest um, listening to those and trying to incorporate some of those techniques. So thank you so much today. If you have any questions or you would like more information, this is my contact and I encourage you to reach out. Um, but just know that kind of the take home point here is just that social connections are really, really important during this time. And we want to build them in to our routine and pretty much build them into everything that we're doing. Thank you so much.